I'd like to express my thanks to ASCRS for the privilege not only of presenting this lecture, but doing so in the Bay Area, where I can share this honor with my family, my friends, my colleagues, and my staff. This morning, I would like to describe what I consider to be the single greatest achievement in our field of cataract surgery during the past two decades. We've come a long way since the days of Dr. Binkhorst. Our meeting is a celebration of one of the most remarkable high-tech operations ever devised. And our energies are now directed toward the next generation of refractive IOL technology. So it is easy to forget the sad irony that cataracts are still the number one cause of global blindness. And with aging of populations worldwide, the backlog of cataract blindness is increasing at an epidemic rate. Using the WHO definition of 2400, there are at least 18 million bilaterally blind from cataract. But you have to multiply this by 3x if you use 2200, or by 8x if you use 2060. Think about it. When you consider the reduction in life expectancy and the loss of productivity uh, by the blind and those who care for them, there are very few medical interventions that can match cataract surgery in terms of cost effectiveness and its impact on human suffering. Who more than those of us in this room can better appreciate just how daunting a challenge this increasing backlog of cataract blindness truly is? You have the high capital costs of purchasing and maintaining the FACO machine, the high cost per case, including that of the IOL. There's a critical shortage in the, in the developing world of ophthalmologists and the educational infrastructure necessary to train a novice FACO surgeon, let alone one that can handle these advanced mature cataracts. And then the population has poor access to their post-operative refraction and a YAG capsulotomy. So clearly what we need is a way to maximize the productivity of those scarce surgeons using rapid surgery that can be done in a very high volume. We must be able to do these advanced cataracts with a low complication rate, and it must be most importantly affordable. Well, amazingly, this very goal has been achieved for well over a decade at the Aravanai Hospital System in southern India. Founded by the legendary ophthalmologist Dr. Venkataswamy upon his mandatory retirement from government service, this started as a small family business. He financed this tiny 11-bed clinic in southern India with the modest mission of curing all unnecessary blindness in southern India. And like many family businesses, he recruited his own family to staff it to the point where today this is the same hospital. Now they have revolutionized the way to do a cataract camp. They screen the patients at a remote village or screening center on Sunday. They find all the patients that have cataracts and they transport them on these school buses back to one of the regional Aravind eye centers where they stay for several days, they have their surgery and they do their recovery there. They're later brought home and a team will go back a month later to do the post-operative camp. This was a major departure from the traditional way that a camp was done, where the team would be transported out into the rural areas, often operating under less than ideal circumstances and with poor results in terms of infection. And as I said, these patients arrive Sunday night, and then every single one of them is done Monday afternoon. It may be three or four hundred, I think the record is five hundred. When I first went to Aravin, they have wonderful FACO surgeons there, and I went there to teach FACO. What I did not expect was to see and, and to be really literally blown away with the skill, the speed, and the stamina of these Aravin surgeons and with the amazing orchestration of their operating room. It was like military precision. And what you're watching is a manual small incision cataract surgery, or SICS, it's temporal, it will be sutureless, done with the retro bulbar in less than five minutes. When I saw this, it was really a revelation. I said to my host, Dr. Venkatesh, who you're seeing operating here, this is something that every cataract surgeon in the world needs to see at some point in their life. 
Uh, what you ought to do is do a video and can you sort of have a split screen where in one half you show this amazing surgery, but in the other half you show the choreography of how your surgical team does this high volume using, as you see here, two different beds and one surgeon. And use a timer so we can see without any editing how long the case takes. And I told him that if you could do this, I'll find a way so that a lot of people in the West can see this. And so, Venki, today I'm fulfilling that promise. So, using this system, one surgeon can do between 12 and 18 cases an hour. And the entire team can do about two or 400 a day, as I said. And here you see all the patients are lined up uh, in the same OR where they're having their surgery in an assembly-like fashion. Now, how do they control the cost? They do this by manufacturing their own supplies. This includes the spectacles, the sutures, the medications, and the IOLs. And for a PMMI IOL, such as you're going to see here, uh, they cost about $5, which brings the total cost per case uh, to $15. They don't throw anything out if possible. They reuse their FACO tubing. They reuse their BSS. They use the same gowns and gloves. And they use a short cycle flash sterilization. Now what does this do to the incidence of infection? We actually just looked at this and our publication appears in the current issue of the Journal of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. We looked at uh, 42,000 conse consecutive cases during this time period performed at the Pondicherry Aravin, which is where this surgery is occurring. This includes residents, staff attendings, it includes the poor having this manual SICS as well as FACO, and the overall endophthalmitis rate was 0.09%. Dr. Venkatesh and colleagues have also published their outcomes in the British Journal of Ophthalmology. Uh, they reported on a retrospective series of 600 cases. This represents the two-day volume of three surgeons doing an on average 16 to 18 cases per hour at less than four minutes per case. They had terrific results uh, a vitreous loss rate of only 1% and 90% more than 2060. The real genius of Dr. Venkataswamy, though, was the way that he organized these systems to do high volume care. And his inspiration was, of all things, McDonald's. Because he realized that if you have limited resources, the best way to uh, maximize what you get is by doing volume and doing it very efficiently. And you do that by having standardized protocols that are streamlined where everybody does it the same way, just like a McDonald's franchise. His other guiding tenet was patients pay if they can. Uh, and if they can't, they get care for free. What this means is that about 30% of their patients pay something and 70% don't. And this formula has pretty much held true for the more than three decades that the Aravind hospitals have operated. Amazingly, this allows the system to be totally financially self-sustaining. And for more than three decades, they have gotten minimum philanthropy and essentially no government funds. And the Harvard Business School has used them as a case study. For cataract surgery, and now you can see he's flipping the microscope around. The next patient has been prepared. And this is a very mature cataract that you'll see here and he just goes from one table to the other, and then the next patient will be brought on. So for a cataract operation, what this means is that if the patient wants FACO with an American IOL, they're gonna pay between two to $300 US, and this surplus will then fund the charitable eye surgery. It's also funded the expansion of Aravin from that small clinic into, as you see here, a large uh, regional hospital now. In the 80s, two more regional centers in southern India were added. And most recently, the final two centers, with the one in Pondicherry being the one that you're seeing here where this surgery is being performed. So they now do collectively the largest volume of cataract surgery in the world. Of the 200,000 annual cases, amazingly, 70% are done for free. Equally important has been their commitment to teaching. 
They have one of the leading and most highly regarded residencies in ophthalmology in India, but they've trained many, many, many local Indian surgeons, but most importantly, many surgeons from developing countries who can bring their staff there and try to learn the same technique. They have manuals to explain this with the goal of trying, like a McDonald's franchise, to pass on this knowledge and these protocols to others in the developing world. Uh, the staff that you're watching are equally amazing. Uh, they start, they're recruited as young women from uh, local schools. They're not allowed to be married, and if they join on, they'll stay in large dormitories together on the campuses of these hospitals. Uh, they are trained, depending on their aptitude, to, just like in the military, they may be selected to do refractions or work in the back office. They may work in the OR. Maybe they'll work in the kitchen or in the laundry. But everyone is trained to do something the same way. It doesn't matter which of the hospitals you're at or which of the surgeons you're working with. And as I say, it's just like military precision uh, to watch them, and it's truly amazing. So see, you see here it's still less than two and a half minutes, and he's going to again put in the same uh, PMMA IOL in this case. The next patient alongside is already being prepped, and he'll swing the microscope over, uh, do that case simply by rinsing off his gloves with uh, chlorhexidine. And this goes on and on, hour after hour, at this amazing uh, pace. Well, a little further to the north, an equally amazing story is unfolding in Kathmandu. This is Dr. Sandik Ruit, who was a local Nepalese ophthalmologist born in a very remote village without roads, and he single-handedly ushered Nepal from intracapsular surgery to IOLs. Of the awards that I'm listing here, the Magsaysay -Say is the Asian equivalent of the Nobel Prize. As you've heard, his partner is noted American ophthalmologist Jeff Tabin. Jeff was one of the elite mountain climbers in the world prior to becoming a cornea specialist at the University of Vermont. Today he's professor at Utah. He just received the Academy's Humanitarian Award, and in just three weeks, he'll be back here in the Bay Area where the Dalai Lama will present him with this year's Compassion Award. And the two of them founded the Himalayan Cataract Project in 1995 with the goal of eradicating cataract blindness in mountainous Asia. And they follow these three guiding principles. A, like at Aravin, having a cost recovery system where paying patients are able to subsidize care for the poor. Of having a system where you can produce affordable IOLs. But what differs here is the ability to reach the rural settings where much of the population lives through outreach eye camps. And this is the ripple effect of the Himalayan Cataract Project. They go to the countries first, they donate equipment, they teach, in some cases they set up clinics, the doctors often will come back to Tolganga with key staff where they can go undergo intensive training, and they've been successful at, at propagating this system, as I said, with this ripple effect. And as Alan mentioned, the high-profile UN Millennium Village Project uh, recently recruited them to do ophthalmic interventions at 12 of their villages in 10 countries. And these are the five countries that Jeff has already visited. Because, as Alan said, the, this is a high-profile project, they realized that blindness was one of the biggest impediments to economic progress. So here in the middle of this fairly poor city is this oasis of modern medical technology, the Tilganga Eye Center. They have a tremendous full-time staff. They have all the subspecialties, wonderful training. And they have this beautiful IOL manufacturing facility through a grant from the Hollows Foundation, where they are supplying high-quality, low-cost IOLs, both foldable and PMMA, to 60 countries in the developing world. Dr. Ruitt's version of the manual SICS uses a triangular capsulotomy, and he uses an irrigating lens vectus to remove the nucleus. And this is their distribution in terms of cost recovery of those that pay something or a discounted amount or get their care free. But notice also, like at Aravin, they are doing FACO. 